Uh, on the final note, so we're going to bring in, bring up Craig, Craig, and he's going to give us his final keynote to end the day. Craig, please come up. All right. Thanks, everyone. I, I don't know if it's good to be the last speaker of the day or because you're everybody's trying to get home or head to the bar, but uh, one way or the other, you have to put up with me, and yes, I have some PowerPoint slides to show. So. So um, I will say this has uh, been a very interesting conference, and what's uh, very neat about this particular forum is having both content players and wireless providers in the same space. When, you, when I was going back and forth and looking at the different presentations, it was great to see that everybody seems to have the same set of problems, and the primary problem, which is uh, network challenges, right? Everybody wants to be able to deliver their, their content over some form of a network, and everybody's concerned on how to do that. So that was very interesting. So at Ericsson, uh, we, you know, we have a, a big saying out there. We talk about 50 billion devices. And we envision that there'll be 50 billion devices connected by 2020. And I got told by my team that I had to say 51 billion devices because it had been mentioned here before. But I did hear 50 billion devices uh, mentioned today. Um, but as we go through this process, if you picture anything that can be connected and will be connected, it, we're really entering kind of a, revenu a revolutionary space. And what I want to do is I'm going to start by taking a, a minute to show a brief video on how we think the network society will actually help fix some of our major challenges here. I think that's a, a great video. I've been fortunate to be at Ericsson for just a little over two years, and uh, I came out of uh, uh, Nortel, where I'd been for 16 years. And one of the great things about Ericsson is the social aspect of, of what we do. And when we look at taking care of our pro taking care of product and how we take care of our customers, we always look at how it affects the society. And I say they say a picture's worth a thousand words, but I think that video is probably worth a million words and doesn't have to say anything. It's just a great video. So it's it's one of the favorite things that I have uh, on the on the uh, videos that we've done. But if you also take a look at just some of the innovations that have, have changed lives over the years, and we'll talk a little bit about where we're at. Uh, but if you look at things like uh, the airplane, which changed the way people travel. You look at things like microwaves. How many people here don't have a microwave oven, for example, in their house? Or you look at even the ATM machine, which I think is probably one of the biggest revolutionary things that have changed, because how many people go to a bank to actually get money? So now I think when you look at the network society and the way that people will utilize smartphones and the way that they'll utilize the content that the broadcasters deliver and other application providers deliver, I think we're all at the cusp of a very revolutionary, life-changing moment in our lives that will be similar to some of the others. So why are we moving in the direction of 50 billion connections? What are some of the drivers? 
so the, the primary driver as we see enabling the revolution is the fundamental forces shaping that, and that's mobility, broadband, and cloud. And the three of those things together have really given us the ability to, to transform how we communicate and how we change people's lives. And if you, take, if you think about it, it's really been 3G and 4G within our wireless networks that have delivered this change. If you look at uh, where, we, where we expect to be in 2016, uh, you take a look, there's 7 billion people on this planet today. 5 billion people actually have some type of a mobile subscription. Now, not all of those today have smartphones, but only half a billion people have a broadband subscription. So as people go with smartphones, and I'll just take a poll, how many people here actually have smartphones? I assume everybody here has a smartphone, right? Is there anybody that does not have a smartphone in this room? Uh, there's one person that doesn't have a smartphone, too. So if you, if you think about that, all of us are, are truly connected. But we're, this is truly going to a broadband revolution, and that's really where we're headed, and mobility is where we're headed. And believe me, this doesn't even include M to M, which will be much greater. So let me ask a question before I go to this slide real quick. How many people in the room take their smartphone and set it next to their bed at night when they sleep? Okay. Raise your hands. Got to come on. Raise your hands. Okay. Come on. Raise your hands so everybody can see. All right. How many people actually do their email in bed when they wake up in the morning? You at least take a look. You look at it. Okay. So here's some outstanding facts. Here's some interesting facts. 40%, and actually this room's pretty representative of that. This was done by Ericsson uh, Research Consumer Labs. And 40% uh, of the people actually do email while they're in bed in the morning, and 50% do email when they go to bed at night. That's, that's a pretty interesting uh, statistic. You know, but, but if you look at what this says is from smartphone usage, it's really truly become an integrated piece of our daily lives. The one, the one that I think is also an interesting statistic is dinners. Still 32% of the people use smartphones while they eat dinner. I know, I know in my household, my wife makes all phones go away from the dinner table when we're having dinner, so I found it to be very interesting. Yeah. Does that statistic say that 69% of the people do it while they're driving? Well, while they're, while they're commuting. So, yes, yeah, 70% of the people do it while they're commuting, which would be on a train, probably. I, I can tell you, I think in New York, you're not allowed to text while you're driving. Is that right? Yeah. People do it anyways. Not allowed to jaywalk either. In, Cal in California, you're not supposed to do it, but we had a governor that did it at one point as well. So, um, But, yeah, 70% of the people actually do something while they're commuting in some form or fashion. So... And I think a lot of what you guys have talked about here has been the networks and some of the challenges you've had. And obviously, you can see the significant data consumption that occurred in 2011 and how data has really affected these networks. And in 2012, we're actually seeing LTE fart smartphones or 4G smartphones actually at almost 500 megabits uh, on average for the user. So we're seeing these data increase, and I would suspect that by 2017, when these are published numbers, but by 2017, we'll probably reach above the numbers that are sitting there right now. And all of this type of traffic really puts significant pressure on the networks that, you, that the broadcasters are trying to utilize, as well as the operators who are trying to operate those networks. So if you look at the cloud, and here we talk a little bit about the cloud, and, and this, I think, is an opportunity for everyone, and this may be the first point, I should say, for where we will see true convergence and where people will actually start working together in order to deliver. Because I think the consumers and the end users from, a biz from the business will really force folks to work together because they're going to demand uh, exceptional content and they're going to demand, they're going to demand an exceptional ex uh, experience. But, you know, this is an opportunity for the cloud, and I think when you look at mobility where it actually puts it actually becomes an area where revenue generation and new types of revenue can be generated uh, working with the cloud and give you some examples. Uh, when I go into a hotel room now, uh, I, I don't necessarily turn on the television anymore. There's not a lot of need to turn on the TV. As long as they have Wi-Fi, uh, I can actually stream my Netflix when I want to watch my movies. I can watch baseball on MLB.com, which I typically do because I'm out of market much, so I'll watch that. I can call home on Skype have a video conference call, see my family if I choose to do so. 
uh, and then I can read my books by just pulling them down off of Amazon. So I don't necessarily need to experience anything when I'm in the room. I don't have to use any of the communication aspects that are already there. I can personalize and put together the type of, uh, type of experience that I want when I'm in that hotel room. And I think users will end up doing that. And of course, a lot of these particular types of applications that sit in the cloud can be used on wireline or wireless and on multiple devices. So I'll be in my home in Plano and I can watch on my computer. Uh, I can actually watch the baseball game or I can be watch it from my cell phone, which uh, is an experience that I can have in any way I want to, to get that type of content. And you know, just kind of an interesting story, my barber, believe it or not, actually went into the cloud this week. So uh, I got my email from him telling me I could make my appointments in the cloud now when I wanted to do so. No joke, but I actually got the email here and I thought, was, I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, piece. So cloud can be a little bit for everybody. So what's driving this? So obviously you guys have talked lots of network challenges. How do you deliver content? I mean, obviously by, by 2015 we expect traffic to increase fivefold and it's going to be predominantly driven by online video of some form. And I think you know you guys as broadcasters probably see more video being pulled down and people pushing for that. And I can tell you that the operators are seeing the same exact thing. Uh, you know, when when I travel, I'm streaming a lot of video down as well. But this is where we believe uh, the internet traffic will be going. Uh, so what does this leave? So as you guys said, this leaves network challenges. And again, I saw this on both sides. So everybody says they have your network challenges. But if you look at this, today there's 845 million Facebook users, there's 25 billion uh, apps that have already been downloaded, and then you start looking as you work towards 50 billion devices, the fact that 58% of the video, 58% of the traffic will actually be video, and what some of, what some of the, uh, uh, you know, I think the average data would be 50 gigabytes is what's projected in 20, is that 2015, I think it is. So a tremendous amount, and what, that, what that's going to force is, somehow everyone who we saw in that cloud is going to have to figure out how to work together in order to deliver these services because it can't just be one or the other uh, and there's got to be a way for everybody to monetize so again it's nice to see all of these folk all of you folks here together and the opportunity to look and try to figure out how we do that but i think the key and, and the one thing i will tell you is you know a lot of hope after being here today and seeing that uh, you know, everybody is focused on some form of quality and performance, whether it be network quality or performance. And I think a lot of the over-the-top providers as well as the operators recognize that quality is key. And, and that's probably the most important thing. And you know, with different, with different business models, the challenge will be how to figure out how to ensure and maintain accept, exceptional end user experience. And I think if you keep in mind that over the top means that the operators have less and less visibility of what's coming over their network. So that makes it much more difficult for them to forecast what they need to add to their network. And that's where I think there's an opportunity as you go into the cloud and some predictability can occur and folks work together, you actually start to forecast some of that traffic. And that's probably the biggest issue that the operators have today is understanding what's coming across. So let's talk a little bit about user satisfaction because this I think is a topic that everybody knows. When operators and, and over the top providers talk about exceptional experience, you guys, you guys are all correct. I mean that's the most important thing to an end user and that's what I think is going to drive everyone to work together at some point. In fact, Ericsson Consumer Labs shows that the three major drivers of end user satisfaction are smartphones, their applications and devices, and price plans. And you know, people will pay more in order to get a better experience. And I think that's one of the things that everybody has to remember, especially uh, folks that are high-end users, and I'll show that in a second. But you know, if you take a look, what's the top driver of user satisfaction? It's, it's gonna be network quality. And that, that's the, the optimum top driver, network performance. People will pay more for a better performing network, as I said. Coverage where people need it fast and reliable, uh, a connection to the internet, are must-haves for smartphone users, and this reflects the need to be constantly connected for, part, for a positive smartphone experience, and I think that's, that's very key. If you look at why performance matters, and I think this is also very key, even when you have a, a very basic user, performance matters to them almost as much as an advanced user. 
the advanced user may not may may want to pay more and, and the price plan may not be as important to the advanced user but it's still important to everyone and when network quality and coverage is the top driver there's a greater potential for subscriber acquisition and retention so there's definitely an opportunity to monetize and one of the things that I think is that from an over there's never been a better time when an, when the over top providers and the operators really need each other and they need to figure out a way to monetize that cloud and, and a way to deliver exceptional service and I don't think that there's necessarily today a plan on how that will work but I think as we go forward the problems are the same for the content providers who will be delivering content in the cloud versus the operators who will probably be pulling off content off of those cloud and trying to get them delivered to their customers so those that can figure out work together I believe will actually end up being the ones that will be very successful because they'll figure out a way to deliver the most optimal experience to their customers. And lastly, you know, uh, what I'll say is whether you're measuring utilities and you saw that video, which I think is great, or receiving weather alerts or just gaming or watching video, uh, there's going to be so many new applications and different ways of doing business from the way that we do business today, and that's what I think is just great about this particular industry. But the most important thing for all of us in this room, outside of what our customers will experience, will be the understanding of how the network works and how it operates and how every time we run a video over that network, it affects everybody else on the other end of that network and how that comes out. And I think that's extremely important. And partnerships between over-the-top providers and, and the operators will be key to the success of how our customers can continue to receive the most optimal experience that they want to receive. And I think these partnerships in the cloud are just forming. So I think how things will happen down the road Will be, will be things that we never expected. And at Ericsson, you know, we feel that everyone has a social responsibility to find a way to deliver these new networks and services, especially when we all have the ability to influence so much of tomorrow's society. So I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to all of you, and uh, I hope uh, you guys have a great trip home. Thank you.